Hi! Are you guys ready to play some more music out of chapter 4? Today we're going to be playing the rest of the pieces from this chapter that are going to be in the minor keys. So the first one we're going to look at is on page 112 called the Latvian Melody. So get your books open and let's look at this together. So first we're going to look and see that it's, it has three flats. So when a piece has three flats, what do we normally think the key is? What is what we were just learning about in the last couple of weeks? Well, first we're going to look at the next to the last flat and see if it could be that we're in the key of E flat. So I go over and I look at my music and I see that it does not end on an E flat, which normally we think would happen. It would end on the tonic. And I see what does it end on? It ends on a C minor chord. Do you see the C in the bass clef with the C minor triad above it in the right hand? Well, we would not typically end a piece on an, a three, the chord built on, on, on top. If, if the key is E flat, we would not typically end on the six chord, which would be a C minor, right? No. So then we look at the beginning of the piece. It also starts on a C. So then how do we determine if this is the major key or maybe we're in a form of the minor for E flat? We can go down three half steps from E flat, or we can go up to the sixth scale degree in E flat. And lo and behold, both times it is a C, obviously. And so I would tend to think this is going to be in C minor because it ends on a C minor triad and with a C in the bass. Okay, so then we're going to see what are the two, what are the chords we're using in this? I see the one, the tonic the minor one, the minor C minor chord, and then I see the 5-7, the major 5-7 chord that we had also in C major. So then we're going to look and see if we see any patterns. Well, the pattern that I am seeing in this piece is that the right hand plays the melody line, and then in the second line, the left hand is going to play the melody line that was played by the right hand, which means we have to form our, our 1 and 5, 7 that we've been learning how to do that in our left hand. Now we have to figure out how to do that in the right hand. So let's talk about that for just one second. When you have a C minor triad in the right hand, you still have 1 on C, 3 on E flat, and 5 on G. To change that to a 5-7 with the same notes in the same position that we did in the left hand, we're going to still maintain our common note between those two, between the C and the G chords, and that note is G. So when we have it in our right hand, our G is going to be our fifth finger or our pinky. If we still want to have that feeling, what I call the squish the bug, where you have a note of an interval of a second right down from that G, that note would be F. In the right hand, our fourth finger will play that F. <clears throat> so we now have a 5 on G, a 4 on F, and we will move our thumb down from a C to a half step down to the B. So as we had in our C major, we used the notes C, E, G, and B, F, G, now we have C, E flat, G, and still B, F, G. So let's look at Latvian melody. We've determined it's in the key of C minor. We're going to be using a C minor triad and a major 5-7 chord. Then we're going to look at the patterns. We're going to look for legato slurs under the legato <laughs> legato patterns under a slur. We're going to look at our dynamic changes. I'm not going to talk about each one of them. I want you to be able to look at that. And I also want you to clap out the rhythm. I will clap out the first line. We have a pickup beat. We're in 3-4. So I will give you a little bit and then we'll go. One, go. So I want you to do that at home before you try to play the piece because again, you will figure out how the rhythm is going to go that you will then it'll be easier to fit the notes into it. And if you'll see the left hand 
in the second line is going to have the same pattern. Let me just play this for you and then we'll go on to the next one. if you notice this, but something to be mindful of when you're playing a piece. The melody line wants to be, needs to be louder than the other. So at the beginning you had the right hand playing the melody line, so it should be louder than the left hand. In the next line you had the left hand playing the melody line, and it should be louder than the right hand. Okay, we'll stop for now and then we'll go on to the next piece in the next video. See ya!